Hello, in this tutorial I will show how you can insert a scatter plot or dot plot in Excel. A scatter plot is used to show the relationship between two variables and highlights the degree of correlation. On the spreadsheet you see a table containing prices for several rides of different taxi services in London. In the first column you see the distance in miles for each ride. Next to it is the price in pounds. We will soon travel to London and are curious about what we may expect to pay for a cab driving us from the airport to our hotel. This is a 20 miles drive. To insert the scatter plot, you select the entire table, including the titles, navigate to insert, then the charts section, where we select the insert scatter or bubble chart. So the chart appears on the screen. Each combination of a distance and the corresponding amount paid is visualized as a dot. Now that we have our plot, we will add axis titles and change the plot's title. To change the title, you click on it. Select the text and type whatever you like. Let's take scatter plot of London taxi rides. Next, we add the axis titles by navigating to chart design. Select add chart element and then axis titles. First, we add the X axis title by selecting primary horizontal. Then we select the text and again type whatever we want. Let's choose distance. Next we go back to add chart element, axis titles and select primary vertical. Again select the text, I'm going for price. Using this chart we are able to verify if a certain relationship is present for our data. Here you can recognize a linear relationship. Each change in the distance brings about the same change in price. As mentioned previously, we are interested in finding the amount we will have to pay for the 20 miles drive from the airport to our hotel. To help us with this, we can add a trend line to the plot. To do so, you click on the chart, navigate to add chart element under the chart design tab. We click on trend line and select linear because we recognized a linear relationship in the data. In the chart, you see a straight line appear. This line is calculated using the least squares method. This method finds the best fit for a dataset by minimizing the sum of the offsets of points from the plotted curve. Now, we would like to know the price for a distance of 20 miles. To find this, we will first extend the trend line until we reach a distance of 20. We do this by double clicking on the trend line. The side panel appears in which you can format the trend line. In this panel, you can indicate the number of periods forward you would like to make the forecast for. In the chart, the line ends at 12. So we choose to forecast 8 periods forward. We will fill in 8 and press enter. Now you see that the trend line is extended to 20. You can read that you would pay between 100 and 120, about 115 pounds for the trip. To be sure that we read the figure correctly, we can add the trend line's formula and compute the exact price value for a distance of 20 miles. To add the formula, we tick the display equation on charts box in the side panel. To find the exact value, we fill in 20 in the formula. So we select the cell where we will make the computation. Then we type equal sign 5.484 times 20 plus 5.3413. We enter and find the value 115.021. Remark that another way to compute this value is to make use of the trend function which computes a linear trend line and returns the y value for whatever x value you enter. Here you type equals trends of the known y's, which are the price values. Then we enter the known x's, which are the distances. And finally, we enter the new x, which is 20. So the same value appears. Finally, let's add the R squared value. This value measures how well the observed outcomes are replicated by the model. The higher the value, the better the model. We add this value by clicking on the trend line. Then the format trend line side panel opens, where you can highlight the display R squared value on chart checkbox. The R squared value is 0 0.9834 here which is very high, so the linear model is a good choice here. If you for example select 
an exponential trend line to fit the data, you see the R squared drops to 0 0.8699. And the logarithmic trend line makes the R squared drop to 0 0.8536. Based on these values, we can conclude that the exponential logarithmic models are not well suited for this data and won't return a good forecast. Let's go back to linear, which gives the best result. This concludes our tutorial on Excel scatterplot. Subscribing to the channel would make my day. If you have any questions or remarks, let me know. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.